happy Sabbath. We're so glad to be here with you. We're at the playground and we're ready to worship. So thanks for joining us. Let's sing together. We're gonna sing, Let Us Come Together. We'll start slow and then we'll get faster. Save 
Jesus loves even me. I am so glad that our Father in heaven tells of his love in the book he has given. Wonderful words in the Bible I see. This is the dearest that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. melodies. This is kind of a new one for us singing it with Sabbath school here and it's a motion one so we will sing making melodies and then I'll do something and then you're gonna copy it okay we'll do it uh, more than one week so that you can learn it with us. Making melodies in my heart making melodies in my heart making melodies in my heart to the king of kings thumbs up thumbs up here we go making Thumbs up, pinkies up, pinkies up. Making melodies in my heart, making melodies in my heart, making melodies in my heart to the king of kings. Thumbs up, thumbs up, pinkies up, pinkies up. Elbows up, elbows up. Making melodies in my heart, making melodies in my heart, making melodies in my heart to 
you the king of kings. Thumbs up, thumbs up. Pinkies up, pinkies up. Elbows up, elbows up. Chin up, chin up. Making melodies in my heart. Pinkies out, pinkies out, elbows up, elbows up, chin up, chin up, tongue out, tongue silly. out. Make a melody in my heart, make a melody in my heart, make a melody in my heart. Be the king of kings. Thumbs up, thumbs up, pinkies out, pinkies out, elbows up, elbows up, chin up, chin up, tongue out, tongue out. And we weren't standing, but sit down. Good job, you guys. Good morning, boys and girls. Happy Sabbath. I'm so excited to be here with you for another Nature Nugget. All right, let's jump in and learn about another one of God's amazing creatures, shall we? Here's your clues for this week's Nature Nugget animal. Clue number one, there's over 12,000 different species of this kind of animal. And clue number two, they can be found on every continent in the world except the Antarctic. And if you remember, the Antarctic is very cold. Do you remember who likes to live there? That's right, the penguins. So let's think, what animal did God create that lives on every continent? Hmm. Here's another clue for you. They are very tiny. They're one of God's tiniest creatures. And they're never lazy. That's right. Did you guys guess the ant? This week's Nature Nugget Animal is all about the ant. So let's jump in and learn some fun facts about the ant. Ants are actually very interesting insects. They live in colonies just like their relatives, the bees. Each of the ants has a very special role in their colony. The queen takes charge in laying eggs. The male ant mates with their queen, and the other ants, especially the other female ones, are worker ants. They work in building the ant hill, and they also work hard to find food, and in acting as soldier ants. The soldier ants are in charge of protecting their colony. They also attack other ant colonies sometimes. When soldiers' ants start to conquer and attack a colony, they take away with them eggs coming from the colony. When eggs start to fight, they usually do so to the death. When these eggs start to hatch, they become slave ants when they grow up, working for the new colony. Here are some fun facts about ants. For one, did you know they're capable of carrying 20 times their body weight? Can you imagine yourself carrying a car? That's what ants are capable of doing. They bring with them leaves, insects, and crumbs as food for the entire colony to eat. Carpenter ants work in building their nest in many places, including logs, as well as houses. They chew their way through the wood in order to create nests. They may cause damage to houses when they are not controlled. The red fire ants can cause a very painful sting. They also build mounded ant hills inside the ant colony. You can see several rooms and tunnels. As soon as the queen ant dies, the entire colony typically dies in just a few months. Queens are only replaced rarely while the workers are not capable of reproducing. Did you know there are over 12,000 ant species all over the world? Ants do not have ears. However, they still can hear by means of feeling vibration in the ground with the use of their feet. When the ants are foraging, they usually just leave a trail of pheromone in order for them to know where they have been. Ants also do not have lungs. Oxygen goes inside all the tiny holes in their body, while carbon dioxide goes outside the very same holes. Indeed, ants are very interesting little creatures. They have a world of their own, and they survive on their own as well. Getting to know them better makes you appreciate the reason why they are living with us. Alright, let's talk about five fun facts about ants. Here we go. 
Fun fact number one. Did you know that the total mass of all the ants in the world is the same as or greater than the total mass of all humans living in the world? Fun fact number two. Did you know that ants and humans are the only creatures who farm other creatures? Fun fact number three. They are one of the world's strongest creatures relative to its size. And fun fact number four. Did you know that scientists have estimated that ants can move about 50 tons of soil every year in one square mile? And fun fact number five. Did you know that ants are one of the most venomous insects in the world? Wow, there are so many amazing things about ants. Do you also know that Solomon from the Bible, do you remember he is one of the wisest men? He um, advised his son to watch the ants, to study them, and to draw lessons from them. Do you know what strikes you most about ants is that they are always busy. They are always going somewhere, always doing something, and they never, ever give up. They are never lazy. It is wonderful how all their efforts is for good, for the good of the whole colony, not just themselves. For example, ants keep the nest warm by going for a walk in the sun, storing the warmth, and then releasing the heat once they're back in the nest. Ants also have two stomachs, one to feed themselves and one to feed others. They take care of their nest by keeping their tunnels and rooms clean and tidy and add to them by building more. Ants also get rid of all the rubbish, which is trash, by taking it out of the nest. Now, we should ask ourselves, are we as hardworking in our church family? Do we think of others before ourselves? Do we care for each other? Hmm, how can you be like the amazing ant? I think that is such a wonderful lesson, don't you, that we can learn from the ants to be hardworking and always willing to work as a team and to give blessings to everyone in our community. And remember, like the beautiful book Steps to Christ talks about, we can learn more about Jesus in nature by the green fields, the trees, the passing clouds. All of it speaks to our heart and invites us to become acquainted with Jesus who made them all including the very hard-working ant. All right, boys and girls, here are your clues for next week's Nature Nugget Animal. This animal can fly up to 60 miles an hour. And clue number two, they are some of the heaviest flying birds. Hmm, let's think about it. I can't wait to join you again next week for another Nature Nugget. Bye! Rishan and his family were moving from the big city to a small house on a mountainside in India. Rishan had many toys, and his mom and dad needed to talk with him about getting rid of some of them. You don't need all these big toys, his dad said. You are going to be very busy doing things other than playing with them. His mom talked about the children living in the village near the new house. The village children are poor and don't have nice toys like you, she said. Why don't you give them your big toys? Brishan was an obedient boy, and he didn't mind giving away his big toys. He gave them to the boys and girls in the village, who were very excited to receive the gifts. They had never owned such nice toys before. Rishan was happy to see their joy, and it felt so good to do something kind for others. As the days passed, Rishan saw that his mom and dad were right. He was very busy. He went to school at home, with his mom teaching him English, Hindi, and other languages, and his dad teaching him math and science. When Rishan wasn't studying, he worked in the family garden, planting, weeding, and harvesting corn, potatoes, and other crops. Every day he memorized three verses from the Bible. After a few months, he could recite many chapters by memory, including Psalm 23 and Hebrews 11. Rishan didn't have much time to play, even with his small toys, so he also gave them away to the village children. The children, especially the little ones, quickly became Rishan's friends. 
At first, they liked him because he gave them toys. But then they got to know him, and they saw that he was a kind, gentle boy. They liked to visit Rishan at his house on the mountainside. Rishan liked to play with the children. Sometimes they played with Rishan's old toys, but most of the time they played church. You see, the children weren't Christians, and their parents weren't Christians. They didn't know anything about God creating the world or Jesus dying for people's sins. They didn't know anything about praying to God. But by playing church, Rishan taught the children about Jesus. They sat on the dusty ground as Rishan told them stories about Adam and Eve, Noah's Ark, David and Goliath, and Daniel in the lion's den. He told them about Jesus dying on the cross to give eternal life to everyone who believes in him. He invited them to pray to Jesus and showed them how. Dear God, he said, thank you for being our very best friend. Please give us a heart of love for you and for others. In Jesus' name, amen. The other children began to copy Rashan's prayers, and they told their parents about the Bible stories. Then some of the parents even asked Rashan's parents to know more about Jesus. Now Rashan doesn't have much time to play with his remaining toys. He is too busy being a missionary for Jesus.
Hello, boys and girls. This is Aunt Fernita, and I have a wonderful story for you called The Lost Sheep. Today's memory verse is from Matthew chapter 28, verse 20. Jesus says, You can be sure that I will be with you always. The message for today's story is Jesus watches over us all the time. Have you ever been in a store or at a park and when you looked up you couldn't see your parents? Did you feel lost? Did you cry? You probably felt like the sheep in a story Jesus once told. Once a shepherd owned 100 sheep. He took good care of his sheep. Every day he led them to green, grassy fields where they could find plenty to eat. Every day he took them to clear, cool water where they could find enough to drink. Every day he chased away wild animals that might hurt his sheep. And every night he led them to a safe place. Before he went to bed, the shepherd counted his sheep to make sure that they were all there. One, two, three, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, seventy-two, seventy-three, seventy-four, ninety-eight, ninety-nine, one hundred. The shepherd counted his sheep each night because he loved his sheep, and the sheep felt safe in the shepherd's care. But one night, when the shepherd counted his sheep, a look of worry came over his face. Something wasn't right. He counted again. 97, 98, 99. And he counted one more time to be sure. 97, 98, 99. Something was definitely wrong. One of his sheep was missing. The shepherd didn't stop to think about how hungry he was. He didn't worry about his sore feet. He didn't say, I'll go look for that lost sheep tomorrow when it's not so dark and when I'm not tired. He didn't say, I still have 99 sheep here. I don't really need the one that's missing. Not at all. The shepherd loved every one of his sheep, so he stopped everything he was doing to look for the sheep that was lost. Looking for a lost sheep at night isn't easy. The shepherd bumped into some rocks. Ouch! He scratched himself on prickly bushes. Ooh! But far away, he could hear the sound of a frightened sheep crying. Bah! Bah! The poor sheep knew it was lost. It knew it wouldn't be safe until it was back with the shepherd. The shepherd followed the sound. Bah! Bah! He could tell he was getting closer and closer. And then by the light of the moon, he could see his sheep caught in a thorny bush. Gently, the shepherd pulled apart the bush. He didn't care about the prickles that poked and scratched his hands. He just wanted to set his sheep free so he could take it safely home. And then, once it was free, the shepherd gently put the sheep over his shoulders and carried it home. The sheep was heavy. But the shepherd didn't mind. He was happy he had found his sheep. And the sheep was happy too. It knew it was safe again now that the shepherd had found it. Jesus is our shepherd and we are his sheep. He loves every person and he wants us to be kind to every person too. He will take good care of us just as the shepherd took good care of his sheep. And someday... Jesus will come and take us home to heaven. This podcast was brought to you by gracelink.net and Studio El Piso. For more children's resources, please visit gracelink.net. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for sending in your songs and for singing with us. This week is Thanksgiving. So whether you're joining some other family members or your family is just eating Thanksgiving at home together, Thanksgiving is not just about the food, right? We think about the food, but it is a whole attitude of being thankful. Jill, do you have things you're thankful for? Um, 
Lucy, our dog. Our dog. And I think I told you that she had surgery and she is healing. So we are thankful for that. I am thankful for Jillian's, thank you, for Jillian's um, abilities on the ukulele and that God created instruments and music for us. I was looking on Jill's shirt and it says love. I am thankful for love. The love of my family and the love of God, the love of my husband. Um, God's love for us is unfailing and unending, and I am thankful. So have a great week. Let's pray together. God, thank you so much that your love is never ending. God, that you love us despite how we act, whether we are being good or whether we're being bad, it doesn't change your love. I thank you that um, we live in this country where we can celebrate Thanksgiving and think about how you provided for the pilgrims when they came and took care of them. Thank you, God, that you provide for us. I just pray, Jesus, that you would be working in our hearts this week, helping us to become more like you by the power of your Holy Spirit. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Have a good week. Happy Sabbath.